photo at 48 degrees, 51 minutes, 33.14 seconds north. So the other thing iPhoto does, it reverse encodes that geotag, and it figures out, well, that's actually at the Eiffel Tower. In fact, it figures out more about it. It's the Eiffel Tower, and that's the city in Paris, and that's in the country of France. And you have access to all that information to use to search your photos or organize them any way you'd like. Now, I know you're probably wondering, well, what about all those photos I took that I didn't have a GPS chip in a camera, and it doesn't have a geotag in it? Well, that's easy, too. So for example, let's go into this backpacking event. Maybe it's something we did back in 2007. We didn't have a GPS chip in our camera. Well, now when you click on the event, there's a little information button. You flip over the event, and there's a new field up there that says, enter event location. And you just type in where you went on that event. In this case, Yosemite. Well, iPhoto has a database of thousands of locations. It recognizes what you're typing in and figures out that's Yosemite, a great national park in California. It puts a pin on the map right where that is, and it assigns a geotag to all the photos in that event. That simply. So it's really easy for you to add a location to your entire database of photos if you want them all to be placed on the map for you. So where do these maps come from? We actually um, are getting the maps from the Google Map Service. And so if you've ever used Google Maps on the web, you know exactly how to use this map. You double click on it to zoom in. You can go right down to street level and see to the individual street where you were taking those photos. And at any time on the map, when you see a pin, you can just click on it, and it'll take you to where you've seen your photos. Oh, in addition to street maps, we also have satellite imagery as well. So you can see satellite images. Again, click on a pin, and you go right to the photos taken at that location. And because this is places, it has all the photos you've taken, even if they're across different events, because it's about a place now. So that's places. So places joins faces. It's a brand new feature in iPhoto. Now those two things would be enough right there. Those are great, powerful new features. In addition, we've added a lot more depth and power to iPhoto. I want to mention a, a few other things. We have support for some online services. If you use Facebook or Flickr, that's built right in. So how does that work? Well, for example, maybe you have a picture or a few of your friends. And of course, you've used faces in iPhoto, so there's some faces of the people you know have been assigned to them. And if you have your Facebook account set up, you just click the new Facebook button right there at the bottom of iPhoto. And it sends the photo right up to Facebook for you to share with your friends. One of the cool things is Facebook allows other people to name people in the photos if they know who they are, even if you don't. So let's say the person on the far right, you didn't know who that was. One of your friends can, in Facebook, assign that name, and it gets synced right back down to your iPhoto, and you get that name, too. So that's Facebook. You also have support for Flickr. Flickr is a great service where thousands and thousands of beautiful photos are shared, and you can do the same thing. So maybe you've had this photo of this scenery that you want to share up on with the world up on Flickr. There's a button built right into iPhoto. You click it and share your photo up onto Flickr, and now it's there with your Flickr account for everyone to look at. But what's really cool is Flickr also supports geotagging. So it reads the data that we send up from iPhoto, and people can see the places where you took your photos all automatically, built in with geotags. So that's Facebook and Flickr support. Now, once you have all your photos in there, it's really easy with events or places or faces to do a lot of really fun things. One of the simple fun things to do is to show them to other people via a slideshow. So we have a great new feature called Slideshow Themes. So when you go to pick an event, let's say, for example, this ballet um, practice on the bottom left-hand side, you want to took some photos at your child's ballet uh, practice, and you want to go in and, and show that class, you just click it and press the slideshow button, and a new panel shows up. We can not only assign music to your slideshow and set timing, but you can pick one of the built-in themes, and they're really beautiful. So let me show you this ballet theme right now.
one of the cool things about that theme is you notice how beautifully uh, the faces were in the center of the photos? They weren't taken that way. We actually used the face detection to properly position the photos in the middle of your slideshow that you play back for people. <laughs> Maybe your kids are a little older. Here's another theme. Give you an example of, of the shattered theme. Cool. That's a great 3D theme. Now one of the great things about making a slideshow in iPhoto 09 is you can also save the slideshows directly to your iTunes copy so that you can now sync them onto your iPod Touch, your iPhone, and get the exact same slideshow to show your family and friends right here on your iPhone. So that's some of the features, thank you, in the new iPhoto. When in addition to showing slideshows, one of the things that's been really popular with our customers is to print out photos and books right from their, right from their events and now places and faces they create. And they're beautiful books. And we've updated them with even more themes and even more beautiful printing. And I want to give you one example. This is the new updated travel book theme. Here's what it looks like. It's absolutely stunning. And inside, in the theme, we have maps. So we use the geotag data so you can automatically get maps in your books of the places you travel in the photo event that you're showing in this book. You can also have maps that have pins for the photos on that page and where they were taken. And that's all done automatically inside the new book feature on uh, iPhoto 09. And you can print now not only on the sleeve, but customers have asked us to print on the hardcover as well. So these are gorgeous new books. So that's the new books. So if you don't mind, um, I'd really love to be the first to show you the real brand new iPhoto 09 running here on my Mac. So here's iPhoto, it's real, not just a slide. And there's events, something we've had in this last year. It's really great. You can skim over all the events and find all your favorite photos. But now, we have this new feature, Faces. So you saw the snapshots, but the thing the slide didn't show you is how interactive and cool it is. So if I pass my mouse over anyone's snapshot, I see all the faces within that snapshot. And you see how iPhoto with face detection zoomed right in on the face. If I hold down the Option key, I see the entire photo. I can look at the whole photo just the faces of the person in the photo. So it's really easy to, to manage all your friends and faces, but how do you create them? So let's go back to events. I'm going to pick event, this event called City of Light. I'm going to go into it. Let me pick a photo. I'll pick well, this first one at the top. And let's say that's a person I haven't been tracking yet with faces. So I'm going to go into their photo. And I'm going to click this new button, Name. When I do, immediately face detection finds the face in that photo, and it doesn't know who this is, so it says unknown name. So I'm going to type that person's name. That's Allie. And that's it. I've named Allie, and now Allie will be in my faces section. I can manage it. Before I go back there, I'm going to hit the right arrow, go to the next photo in this event, and you see what iPhoto's done? On this photo, it says, first, on the right, it's asking me, is this Allie? So face recognition at work, it already recognized that might be Allie, and it just wants me to confirm it with a check to be certain, yes, that definitely is Allie. And the person on the left doesn't know who that is. Well, that's Allie's mother, so I'm going to name her Claire. And that's it. Now let me go to faces, and you see Allie and Claire have been added with snapshots because they're people I'm tracking in faces. Let's go inside Allie's face here, and now you see I've selected two photos I confirmed were Allie, so they're above the line. Those are for certain alley. Down below, instantly, this is thousands of photos in this library, it's found all these other photos that it believes is alley. I could just use these now, create slideshows or books, but I want to help iPhoto out a little more, give it more information. So I'm going to click this button down below that says confirm name. And what you see, it zoomed right in with face detection on Allie's face in all these photos. Yeah. If I want to confirm that these are definitely Allie and help iPhoto, I just click.
click on them once, and those are definitely alley. I can even do it faster. I'm just going to drag over all these.